friends, Mrs. Espinosa here checking in with you guys. I started my first week of teacher pre-service yesterday and so this week and next week are teacher pre-service weeks and we have lots of training as always. If you are watching and you are a teacher, I'm sure we both feel incredibly frustrated and overwhelmed and I know I was feeling extra anxious just to find out specific details about what our day is gonna look like, how long we're supposed to be teaching, I mean just really the specifics of how virtual teaching is going to go because if you got the chance to watch my previous video that I posted on parent-friendly lesson plans, I talked a little bit about how we were not required to live teach during the spring but all of that is definitely gonna look different now that they've given us guidelines and i know that it's gonna look so different for each school district and each school as well and so yesterday was our first day of pre-service and really it was just kind of an intro day and like welcome back to the staff that came back to our campus and we have a lot of new staff the morning portion it was really just introducing everybody everyone was sharing a little bit about themselves and what we did over the summer and then we breaked for lunch and then we finally got into the nitty gritty details which i was dying to know and so my school ended up um coming up with a virtual learning handbook and it's like 27 pages so they were incredibly thorough and my main concern was definitely the schedule like i just wanted to really know how i'm gonna how i'm gonna be teaching and dividing my time so they went ahead and gave us a schedule. It was a lot of new information though, and I definitely still felt overwhelmed. <laughs> so as soon as our meeting ended, I just shut off my computer, um, put my phone away, and I just went outside and <laughs> played with my dog. But now this morning, now that I know all this information, um, I went ahead and was like looking at the schedule, and I started brainstorming. So that's what is making me feel less anxious is just I went ahead and wrote down all of my just what these next two weeks are going to look like with all of the trainings but I just got this from Target just a basic planner and I went ahead and like I said wrote in all of my professional development for the next two weeks and then I wrote down like kind of a to-do list like this is my jumbled like all of my little ideas in my head and I'm just gonna go ahead and read them to you. Like this is all of the planning that needs to be done. There is definitely limited English in some families. So that's something to keep in mind as like I'm planning all of this. I'm trying not to have too many platforms. I know we have to use Microsoft Teams for like teaching. I'm thinking, well, they asked us to make a website. I did a Google site, so I'll keep working on that. And I also decided that I'm going to use Seesaw. So with Seesaw, I do see that I can reuse digital teaching material that I already have. I think Seesaw is the best option as far as as for the kids independent work whenever it's time for them to practice on their own I think it's the most interactive those are my three platforms that I'm just gonna try to use I don't want to have too much and overwhelm the parents either and so with that said and with knowing that our meet and greet is in one week and it will be virtual so I kind of already started on my PowerPoint realized that I definitely need to be making like a video training for parents on how to navigate those platforms and what else is on my to-do list. I want to get the login info for students. So I'm going to go on campus tomorrow. We do have the option of still reporting to campus. So I think I'll go tomorrow, maybe like a half day, just so I can actually access all of my students, like see what my roster looks like. I haven't been able to access that at home. So I want to contact parents and just let them know I'm their teacher and they'll be getting info from me. Something that's been really helpful and if you haven't heard of it, is Google Voice. And it's an app that'll let you pick a phone number and anybody that you call or text from that within the app, like that's the number they'll have recorded. Especially right now, having to call parents from your, you know, your personal phone. I don't, I'm not comfortable with them having my number. So I have a Google Voice number and that's how I contact parents. I want to make 
pockets for them. I'm thinking I will just focus on fine motor skills like cutting and writing and tracing. These first couple of weeks while we all, myself and my kids, get adjusted to um, our virtual schedule and while it gives me those two weeks to assess and determine just my groups and all of that. What else? Um, yes, I already said I'm going to print my roster, fine motor home packet, keep working on my meet and greet PowerPoint. I need to come up with my own daily schedule and then also some slides to include our what our actual virtual learning expectations will be. I need to <laughs> upload Seesaw, start uploading Seesaw activities, I need to lesson plan for the first and second week of school. Something that I always do for meet and greet is have a student survey that I'm working on. Um, I'm going to do that on Google Forms, which I already started it and it's pretty easy, but yeah, still on my to-do list is my student survey as a Google Form. And anybody is familiar with Osmo, I saw that you can use the Osmo reflector to turn using an iPad as a projector, so I want to look into that. I actually need to write that down. I need to bring my Osmo home because it's in my classroom, so I need to bring that back tomorrow. And then as part of my meet and greet, I will probably record just a small classroom tour just so kids know when it's time for face-to-face. -face. Some of you like this is what our classroom looks like. Um, I still need to prep my home teaching area according to the handbook that they provided us yesterday. Um, I need to figure out a parent-student contact log or ask if there's going to be one they want us to use. And then another PowerPoint slide which would include the skills we're learning this year. So this is my to-do list for now. This is like these are all my ideas that were just floating around. And I just wanted to write them down. So my next step is going to be to go through my list and kind of prioritize and break up all of this to-do list. And the way I do that, I'm just going to go over my list and then write it down day by day. And as I finish something, I'll just cross it out. And if it doesn't get done, it'll just go on the next day. But it'll be okay. <laughs> you just need to be really organized and maximize your time. Right now though, I'm honestly feeling super sleepy. So I'm about to go take a nap and then I'll come back and tackle some of these things on my to-do list. But yep, so that was day one and day two. Tomorrow will be day three. And as I said, I will be going into my classroom. So I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Hi friends! So yesterday when I checked in with you guys, I know I told you that today I was going to my classroom, but there was a big change of plans because I live in Houston and if you're not following the news right now, Hurricane Laura is going to be affect well, we will be affected by Hurricane Laura. So my district decided to close down all of the facilities and schools for today, Wednesday, and tomorrow, Thursday. So hopefully on Friday, I am able to go into my classroom for some stuff that I need. But for today, I was focusing on my meet and greet PowerPoint because our meet and greet will be this upcoming Tuesday. So I really just want to have this done and ready. So I'm just going to walk you through what I've done so far. I watched Jacqueline Richardson's video on how to create Google site and she did it through PowerPoint and she showed a lot of really neat tricks as far as like the, I don't know if you like my colors, but I love my little color palette that I picked. So I'm going to link her YouTube video just because it was super helpful. And if you want to make like a cute, anything on PowerPoint, really, like she was awesome. But anyway, um, so I kind of made like these are just little text boxes that I formatted kind of just to guide me. I color coded my slides. So let's get started here. Um, my first slide is going to be what like my first day of kinder. I was helping my mom and my sister move recently and going through photo albums and I found um, pictures of me on my first day of kinder so I'm going to share those. My next slide is just sharing my family. That's my parents and my little sister, my husband and my little fur baby Sammy. And then I just shared like 10 things about myself and I asked them to, well I will ask them to tell me about them. And typically for meet and greet, I have a, um, a student survey that I give to the parents to fill out 
but I made a digital Google form this year. So let me show you what that looks like. It was super easy to make. It probably took me about 20 minutes, um, but again, I already had my questions, so I just had to type them in. And this is what it looks like. Uh, it asks for student name. Do they have Wi-Fi at home? What technology devices they have? I teach at a Title I school, so I really just need to know this information and um, pass it on to my school. And hopefully those students that don't have access to technology, my school or the district is able to provide them with it. I would like to know if there's someone at home that will be helping them during virtual learning. I've mentioned that I teach at a very multicultural school and I teach English language learners, so very often they speak other languages at home and I love knowing what they are what their cultural background is. If they have siblings, that's really helpful because sometimes the parents have very limited English and sometimes siblings are really helpful in translating, getting information to parents. And do they have any allergies, health or diet needs? What do they like doing at home? Any fears or weaknesses? And then just any other questions or concerns that they have for me. Let me show you very quickly. Um, this is like the Google form whenever you log into your account. It's super easy to make. Um, so this is like a text box. You can pick what kind of text box you want to have. You can add, you can import some questions. You can add images, videos. And this is how you add the little sections. And I did make sure to click on this required tab so that they cannot turn it in without filling out the required information, but you can pick like what kind of answer you want. So for the most part, I picked short answer. I have some that are, um, you know, multiple choice and then checkbox for the technology devices. Like I do want to be very specific about, like I want to know what kind of device they have. So I did pick the checkbox. And right here, you can drag everything if you want to put it in order. But yeah, like it was really, really simple. And you can kind of customize it um, right here. <laughs> so I just picked a, I picked a custom color. I really love purple, like a really light purple. So that's my custom color, the background color. And then they only have like four, um, four choices for the font so I picked the playful font but that's really it y'all and then when you're ready to share it we go to send and you go here and you can shorten the URL so that's what I copied and pasted into my PowerPoint so that's what that link is um, next um, on Friday, like I said, Friday or Monday, hopefully I'm able to go to my classroom and I'm just going to film like a short little video of what our classroom looks like. And I did go into our planning guides for the year and I just want to let parents know like this is what we're learning. Kinder is serious business. So these are all the literacy skills that we learn, all of our math skills science skills and social study skills. My next slide includes class resources. So here I linked my Google site. It is unfinished, so I'm not going to bother showing y'all. I will probably show y'all tomorrow because I think I'll be done for the most part with my PowerPoint today. So tomorrow I'll focus on my website. And this is my URL for for my Microsoft Teams, so just in case you don't know how to add links or how to hyperlink, you just go to insert link and the last thing that you copied should be there. So that's that, just so it doesn't look so bulky. Um, but yeah, we're going to be using a classroom website, then Microsoft Teams. Um, the hub is something specific to my district where they can access um, apps like My On Imagine Learning and Imagine Math, which are used by my school and district. And I decided that they're independent practice activities. I will post on Seesaw because it's a really awesome interactive way for students to complete activities. My next 
slide is virtual learning expectations. Um, attendance, this is according to our school district. So we're basically going to have three live sessions. So this is really what I was working on a chunk of the day. I was trying to condense the schedule that my school gave me. So this is what our virtual schedule is going to look like. Um, our day does begin at 730. And I've decided that this first chunk, this first half hour chunk is going to be pre-recorded. Um, I'll have morning announcements and just break down what we're doing for the day. And then Sar uh, Sanford Harmony is a like social emotional program that we have that I really love and we'll have time for that. And then our live class for a literacy block will begin from eight to nine. And during this time, we will have like a family meeting. We'll go over our morning message or read aloud and then our writing activity. And I made sure that the three live sessions are in yellow and bolded. So essentially, we'll be teaching online. Uh, we'll live for two hours, which is, you know, that's that's doable. Um, but then from 9 to 10, 15, we have um, their independent practice. So, yep, whatever work I assign them, that's the time that they have to complete that. And then I will have small group time. And then we go into our math block for half an hour at 10.15 to 10.45. And then from 10.45 to 11.15 um, is independent practice and more small groups. Then for ancillary, I'm not exactly sure how they'll be logging in or doing that. I mean, as when I get more information, I'll, I'll be more specific with parents. But they'll have that time to log in and do activities, I guess, for art, music. What else do we have? Um, computer, gym. So again, I don't know exactly what that's gonna look like, but it's still included in our schedule. And then half hour lunch. And then um, the last half hour of our live class will be science and social studies. And then they'll have their independent practice. And then the last hour and a half, I have time for more small groups and one-on-one -on -one intervention if I see the need. So I think I'm pretty happy with the schedule. We'll see how it goes once we actually get started. But then we went into, we'll go into virtual learning expectations. And these are, I kind of want to keep the rules very simple. So I ask them to find a quiet spot where they won't be distracted, to wear headphones, keep your video on and yourself on mute, have your materials ready for our live sessions and our small group, which will typically just be a notebook and a pencil, and to make sure that they're wearing appropriate clothes, and hopefully use the restroom before we begin. And then my last slide is how to contact me. The hours will be available, my email, Google Voice number. So my Google Voice number is going to be my primary way of contacting parents. And then I made sure, yeah, to be specific on my hours of availability, which actually I guess I need to change that to 7.30 to 4. I cannot guarantee that I will be available after four. But yep, that is all that I have for my Meet the Teacher PowerPoint. Like I said, tomorrow I'm going to focus on my website, so I'll let you know how that goes. Hopefully this was a little helpful to you if you're having trouble like figuring out how to structure your PowerPoint. And I mean, this didn't take me very long. I'm keeping it really simple and like cute with like the just the colored slides. And if you're interested in what this font is, it is APL Real Talk. So this TPT seller is a primary kind of life, if I'm not mistaken. And I bought her volume three <laughs> fonts because, you know, teachers are obsessed with fonts. So. I used her, yeah, Real Talk. And something really cool that I learned how to do is how to actually change the text. So, for example, this is what the text looks like, APL Real Talk. So, if you would want to make it 
to make the text colorful, you would go to Format, click on this, and now you see that it changed the outline and the text fill. So I want my outline to be black, and then you pick whatever color you want your letters to be. Let's pick that, for example. So it's pretty cool. Like, I just realized how to do that. All right. I will check back in with you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, today is Friday and I actually didn't get to check in with you guys yesterday, Thursday. But last thing I mentioned was that Houston was kind of shut down, or at least our district was in our campus. So I wasn't able to come into my classroom, but I'm here now. I just got here um, and it turned out that Houston was actually not impacted by Hurricane Laura at all. We were very, very fortunate. And yesterday actually turned out to be like a really sunny and hot day. But I guess it worked out that we still, you know, had the day off because I did have a family situation to deal with. So I actually didn't get to work on anything yesterday. Um, and then today we have, oh my goodness, but when I got home yesterday, I finally had the chance to check my email. And so kindergarten teachers this year in my school district, um, this is mandated by the state of Texas. We will have to complete um, some extra professional development called HB3 Reading Academy. And it really walks you through, I guess, like the literacy foundations, which sounds like a really, like I looked through it and it, it looks like a really great um, like PD, but it just really sucks that it's like a really big extra thing um, added on to our, you know, to-do list this year. They did break up, like it's numerous courses and we have deadlines every month for the courses. So I was really frustrated whenever I realized, you know, that'll be a really big extra thing to tackle this year, but it is what it is. And so today, my professional development is walking us through like how what that hb3 reading foundations is um but yeah so i'm in my classroom I'm about to download my student roster and start calling parents so i can give them their login information for microsoft teams so that they're able to log in on tuesday for the meet and greet and oh and <laughs> something new in my classroom is that they did take away all the tables and they have, we, I have like, well, everybody has separate individual student desks, only nine. I think it would allow us to follow, you know, um, social distancing procedures. I don't know if they're going to bring any more like dividers or I don't know, but I do like that the desks will be spaced apart accordingly. But yeah, going back to professional development and pre-service since we are Wednesday and our Thursday PD was canceled. Everything for next week has been rescheduled. So I guess um, it was good that I wrote everything in my planner in pencil. I, I kind of had the feeling like this year, especially things are going to be changing last minute. And this year more than ever, like as a teacher, you have to be flexible. It's my lunch break right now. So I knew I was not going to get here early <laughs> this morning. So I did like my first half of PD at home and now that it's our lunch break, I came back on campus. I did check in with our principal about using platforms that, you know, that I was researching over the summer. So my principal did give me the okay, you know, for me to use all of those platforms. So I'm feeling at ease that, you know, my principal's super awesome. All of my administration is really, really awesome. They're always very flexible as well and very understanding. So they're not forcing us to use specific platforms. For the rest of today, like I said, just finish. I should be done with this training at 2.30ish. I'll call parents and whoever I don't get in touch with, I'll try again on Monday. I guess for this weekend, my goals are to finish my classroom website and <laughs> to edit all of this footage so I can post it and share it with you guys because I know that there's a lot of teachers that like really don't know where to start. So again, I'm hoping that this is helpful. Like this, this is, I'm walking you through how I'm planning and what I'm doing. I guess I'll check back in with you guys on Monday and walk you through week two of my pre-service. But if you've been following along, thank you, thank you. 
and please subscribe and share it with any other teacher friends that you have that you think you know this might be helpful i appreciate y'all and i'll see y'all next week bye